TMZ. Coachella 2019 leads to herpes outbreak. So herpes at Coachella. We spoke to the people over at Herp Alert, which is a treatment and diagnosis website for the STD, and they said that they saw a massive spike in herpes during Coachella weekend one. I like the person behind her. <laughs> the facial yeah. expression. She's oh, this is disgusting. <laughs> and weekend two. Normally they see 12 cases a day in Southern California, but this time for the first two days of Coachella, it went up to 250. Oh, wow, oh my that's God. Than the spike they saw of 60 cases after an Oscars weekend. Man, and thank you TMZ for not making yeah. your video easy to edit. I'd edit oh. so much crap out of that dumb video. Yeah, this sounds worse than the measles. Yeah. <laughs> also, Gone. well, use a condom. Use a condom. HealthyDocShow.com slash support. Use a condom. So important. Science Daily. Gonorrhea cases on the rise across Europe. Following a decline in notification rates in 2016, the number of gonorrhea cases has gone up by 17% across the reporting EU and EEA countries with more than 89,000 confirmed diagnoses in 2017, more than 240 cases a day. The 2017 increase follows the overall trend over the last decade, during which 20 of the 28 EU EEA countries consistently reporting registered an increase in the number of notified gonorrhea cases. Men who have sex with men, MSM, accounted for almost half of the gonorrhea cases, 47% in 2017. The rise in notified cases among women between 2016 and 2017 from 9.5 to 11 per 100,000 population is concerning as untreated gonorrhea can lead to pelvic inflammatory disease or cause infertility. Rates of reported gonorrhea infection vary considerably across Europe from below 1 to 75 cases per 100,000 population with higher rates in Northern Europe. While this variation could be linked to real differences in incident and gynecological, gynecological infection, they are likely influenced by different testing policies and methods, healthcare systems, and access to services, as well as reporting and surveillance system structures. With 558,155 confirmed cases between 2008 and 2017, gonorrhea is the second most notified sexually transmitted infection in the EU slash EEA after chlamydia. More than 3.8 million reported cases during the same period. Holy crap. Yeah. Also note that stack. I'll say it again. Men who have sex with men, that was 47%. So guys, even though you can't get pregnant, you got to protect yourself. Yes. Very important. Men who have MSM. Men why who have why sex don't they just call them gay men? I don't understand. Or homosexual, homosexual men. Homosexual, yeah, I don't, I don't understand. I don't get this. it. We have these. It's a lot easier. It, MSM just. <laughs> I know that confuses me. <laughs> I know. It really confuses me. <laughs> uh, well, plus one. Plus one? Food allergy knowledge, attitudes, and their determinants among restaurant staff, a cross-sectional study. Methods, we collected data face-to-face -face from 295 staff members in restaurants in Dorf, Germany. Knowledge was assessed by asking participants to name three common food allergens and answer five true-false statements. Seven items assessed attitudes. A total of 16 potential determinants were examined using logical regression models with backward selection. Only 30% of the respondents correctly named three food allergies, and 41% attained a perfect score on the true-false statements. The vast majority expressed positive attitudes toward the need for cooperation and shared responsibilities for food allergic customers. However, they expressed attitudes towards serving customers with food allergies and the validity of customer-reported food allergies were unfavorable. Determinants of food allergy knowledge, the type of restaurant professional roles or levels school education and unfavorable attitudes eat gender were identified yeah and i brought this up for you because eating out is kind of a pain for you because you're celiac that means you cannot have gluten yes if you have gluten you get really really sick and yeah. we went it's just you you have to know you have to ask the ingredients specifically which is the hardest part because yeah. people don't want to give you ingredients i know and i wish people could just list out the ingredients mm -hmm. openly uh, I will say soup plantation does a really good job for the most part of listing allergies, but a lot of people are allergic and yeah. it's just be nice to advertise more, especially we, we have friends with avocado allergy, mm -hmm. fish allergies. Well, I remember when we went to Clatch Coffee in Rancho Cucamonga because oh, yeah. that used to be my spot and I used to always get the patio special and it's lists a few ingredients and says our secret ingredient. I yeah. wanted to know what that secret. When you tried to order it and you were saying, no, I'm celiac. I'll get sick if I eat gluten. Yeah. Can you please tell me the ingredients? And she kept and she telling said, me it's well, gluten free. It's gluten free. It's gluten free. What are the ingredients? Now, what are the, what's the secret ingredient? She yeah. said, well, Oreos are gluten free, aren't they? No, they're not. <laughs> but thank you for that telling me what so the secret bad. ingredient is. It's, it's Oreos. So clap yeah. coffee. I know your secret ingredients, Oreos. Well, there's another time I 
remember when I went to this Thai restaurant, I got super sick, even though they told me I got the gluten free mm -hmm. pad Thai or something. Yeah. So, yep. but luckily, I think since a lot of people do have uh, allergies, people are at least slowly becoming more aware. So, yep. Sides daily again. Elderberry compounds could help minimize flu symptoms, study suggests. Anti-influenza activity of elderberry by a group of chemical and biomolecular engineering researchers from the University of Sydney's Faculty of Engineering and IT has determined exactly how a popular ancient remedy, the elderberry fruit, can help fight against influenza. The researchers used commercially farmed elderberries, which were turned into juice serum and applied to cells before, during, and after they had been infected with the influenza virus. The photo, oh, excuse me, phytochemicals from the elderberry juice were shown to be effective at stopping the virus infecting cells. However, to the surprise of the researchers, they were even more effective at inhibiting viral propagation at later stages of the influenza cycle when the cells have already been infected with the virus. The team also found that elderberry's antiviral activity can be attributed to its anthocyanidin compounds, phytonutrients responsible for giving the fruits vivid purple coloring. The black elderberry is a small antioxidant rich fruit common in Europe and North America and is still commonly consumed in jam or wine. For medical benefits, elderberry extract is available commercially in tablet or serum form. I don't think I've ever had elderberry. I don't think so either. <laughs> but I always like when these old wives' tales are kind of proven true by scientific studies. Yep. An elderberry. Thank you so much for watching. For more Healthy Talk Show, please consider subscribing to our podcast over at HealthyTalkShow.com slash subscribe. It's free. Twitter and Instagram, at Healthy Talk Show, drop the W. We record the podcast live Mondays at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time over at HealthyTalkShow.com slash live. Love and light.